Alright, hi folks, and welcome back to another video. Now, since all of my disposable income is going towards the saving account for my Dryden bill, I literally don't have anything left to spend on new toys or mods to my current printer. So I thought to myself, this is the perfect opportunity to look back and evaluate the thing that I have built thus far, and hopefully this will keep me entertained. <clears throat> I mean, it will give you a clear picture of the different things that are involved in 3D printing and it will also help me to decide what I want to do with Miss Changer in the future. More specifically, for this video, I will be talking about active chamber temperature management. And before anyone decided to print this up in the Voron Discord and get us both banned, no, I will not be teaching you how to make an active chamber heater. If anything, I am trying to tell you why you don't need to risk burning your house down to get a chamber hot enough to print almost every material out there. Anyway, before we can even begin, what even is chamber temperature anyway? Sound like a stupid question, but it's actually very important for knowing whether you are grounded in your approach or not. More specifically, it related to the uh, position where you're going to place the thermistor in your chamber. That is because whatever your answer is to the question, it most likely has something to do with the temperature of the air inside the chamber. Well, unfortunately for our purposes, air is a horrible conductor of heat. To illustrate that, Imagine the wick on this uh, candle here is your thermistor and let's try to light it up. Mm -hmm. Don't seem like not anything gonna happen. Let's try something a little bit more uh, aggressive. Okay. All right. What I'm trying to get across there is that depending on where the thermistor is placed, it may not be able to detect a literal fire millimeter away from it due to how poor air conduct heat. And that is the same reason why commercial product like this thing here, which is a uh, electric space heater, is treated as a fire hazard and is banned from most rental space. It is also why no designer or team with experience in uh, open source is willing to support or even host the topic of making a chamber heater. Because even if you have the best documentation out there in the world, someone somewhere will still manage to fuck it up. Okay, so where should I be putting the thermistor and how am I gonna increase the chamber temperature without a heater? Well, you see, there's no right answer to where the thermistor should be, only wrong ones. And uh, that's kind of is the problem actually. Which is also why I'm not gonna be giving away any specific temperature numbers in this video, because I'm not comfortable with where I'm putting my thermistor in this specific machine either and there would be a, a tons of testing and all of that before I can even get close to uh, have a theory of where it should be. As for the heater, well you do have one. A rather powerful one in fact, if you are using a DIY system like this Voron or a Raspberry. So much so that it has to be connected directly to the main AC supply from your wall instead of the meager 200 watt uh, that could power everything else in your system. Of course, I am talking about this 500 to 650 watt heater that uh, you have uh, stuck to the bottom of your bed. But isn't all that power occupied with keeping the bed at the right temperature? Well, no. No, that's not how it works. In fact, you can easily test it. Uh, if you have a watt meter or well, if you just read directly from the uh, percentage of utilization of the heater on the web interface. 
from which you can you will definitely see that this heater here will only running at a hundred percent at the very start and once the bed start to approach a hundred degrees Celsius it will slow down and stabilize around 30 just to keep that uh, temperature and what that mean is out of the 600 or so watt on this heater only around 200 or so is used to maintain the temperature of the bed so in other words during a print drop there is a 400 watt heating headroom uh, that just sitting idle inside of the chamber so it's just going to be much safer and cheaper to find a way to uh, capitalize on this heating headroom instead of you know installing a dodgy uh, PTC heater that can burn your house down or straight up electrocute you you go about doing that the most common way is to add this thing here to the bottom of the printer which is the Nevermore Micro and what it will do it is that it will suck some of the static hot air right off the surface of the heater and circulate it around the printer and if that is not hot enough for you and it did not for me the next thing you can try to do is to ditch this uh, carbon basket here which is the main choking point for the airflow uh, to go through this system and then what I had also done is that I have installed it the fan backward so instead of sucking hot air from the bottom and blow it around this uh, is sucking cold air from the environment and blow it underneath the bed what this configuration will do is it will allow you to have more uh, fresh air to be blown across uh, the surface of the heater extracting more heat and circulate it more effectively now do be aware that under the right environment this configuration although simple and uh, uninspiring will be capable of heating up the chamber so much that components within it will start failing because depending on the load that they bear and the specific brand of filament that you use to construct the gantry and these two head the ABS part in, on your two head can start deforming and most of the two headboard except for some of the latest one also do not like to be working at uh, the high ambient temperature that this configuration can generate either and that's exactly why for this specific machine that was made with standard ABS I found out the hard way that I cannot push it any higher even though the uh, heater in the uh, on the bed only uh, stabilize around 50 to 60 percent utilization so in other words I only extract about 100 to 200 watt of heating uh, with this current configuration anyway with that out of the way the next topic we need to uh, go on to is actually uh, the more challenging aspect of active chamber temperature management and well as the 3D printing community has moved on from the good old cardboard box over an Ender 3 era, this might have come to a, a, a surprise to many of you, but the bigger challenge for uh, active chamber management is not the heating up part, but rather the cooling down bit. And that is where this thing comes into play, which is the Nevermore Stale Max. It works but mostly only for the purpose of a quiet filter and cleaning system in circulation mode and that is to say blowing the clean air, warm air directly uh, back into the printer and circulate it around it does not work however at least not well enough in exhaust mode which is when I talk about this thing here and have the exhaust blown straight out of the printer Unfortunately, the rate of hot air removal, although very impactful, is not adequate. That is to say, it cannot cool the chamber down. And in fact, the chamber is still slowly heating up as the, uh, even though the uh, fan of on a Nevermore Stell Mac is 100% in exhaust mode. Furthermore, running this thing at 100% speed exacerbate a, not a problem that is critical to exhaust mode and that is fume bypass 
it is when the dirty film travel above and beneath the uh, this carbon basket instead of going through it I, and not being filtered out at all. In circulation mode, that's not much of a problem because the film would get circulated through the filter over and over again and eventually the concentration of Fox and ultrafine particle will got to a safe level. In exhaust mode, however, there's only one pass. The uh, system gonna pull the air up and pump it straight outside. So an untold amount of concentrated VOC or an ultrafire particle will be pumped into the room uh, through, through all of these fume leakages. And as someone who has been printing in the same small room that ha he has been working and sleeping in, I have no choice on that last one. Welcome to 2025. Let me tell you that that can get very dangerous. What started out as a slight inconvenience can le leave you gasping for air for the course of a few hours. Hopefully not in the ANE, and for those who don't know, that is the uh, emergency service here in the UK. So, in summary of the technical size of things, uh, the heating part of the active chamber temperature management system is pretty straightforward as it is just a matter of finding ways to utilize the heating headroom of the uh, heating that is already available in the chamber. On the other hand, the cooling bit of the equation still need a lot of work right now. As, uh, as far as I know, the Nevermore Stell Max is the biggest filter system that we have available and yet it can barely do what I want it to do for cooling down the system. So what are we gonna do about it and when is that, should that be expected? Well, for Miss Changer V1, which is what you are seeing right now, the answer is nothing. And there's several reasons for that. The first one is that I want there to be a, an endpoint for what is a V1 for Miss Changer. The second reason is that by design, Miss Changer V1 had multiple quirks that make it harder for the addition of an active chamber temperature management system. The first reason among which is that this is one of the bigger uh, Voron there is around with a 350 millimeter bed size. And the issue with this massive volume is exacerbated by the second volume that uh, with Miss Changer V1 and active chamber temperature management. That is the fact that it is a V2.4. So a flying truck entry is cool, and which is why I pick it in the first place. But because the gantry going up and down, we have to keep the area around these pocket uh, here clear of any of anything that they may interfere with the gantry and that is a big issue that make the uh, this system a lot l less space efficient than a trident and in so if in a trident we cannot fill this or this void up with stuff that will reduce the amount of air within the system that need to be heated and cool at any one time you can actually see the, an effective use of this with the uh, Brusa Core 1, for example, where they actually indented the side panel so that we just reduce the volume of air in the system. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. And well, I do appreciate that this video ha is a lot of talking and hand waving instead of, uh, of doing anything. Nevertheless, if you appreciate the information that I have been giving out in this video, uh, then definitely do remember to like and subscribe. As mentioned earlier, I am currently saving up for a uh, Trident build where I can build a version 2 of a 2 changer that you are seeing right now, uh, which is going to be called Miss Changer V2. And your uh, support is very much appreciated. And with that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.